Hey guys and welcome back. My name is Ohapel and today we're going to be talking about my new virtual reality headset. We're going to call this virtual reality headset 2.0 since I already made one. The previous one worked kind of like a Derovis dive where you could only use iPhone apps to get it to work properly or Android apps if you have an Android device. This one is designed to be more advanced, work with PC. First things first, I just want to go over the pros and cons list for it. So the primary benefit is the cost. Obviously an Oculus Rift is gonna cost you somewhere between three and $400, and they're not really even available right now because DevKit 1's out of production, DevKit 2's on its way. So this has the benefits of being cheaper by far. This will cost you $15 to $50, depending on how you can source your parts and programs. The next benefit, which is over things like the Derovas Dive in my previous version, this can be used to play most Oculus Rift games, basically anything that allows mouse control, and almost any PC game. Like I said, I can play Seven Days to Die, Minecraft, Halo, Call of Duty, pretty much the sky's the limit. Skyrim, any of that stuff's good. And lastly, you can use it like an NVIDIA Shield. You can actually use this to play your PC games in a different room. If you have a wireless Xbox 360 controller hooked up to your PC, um, you can't take advantage of the head tracking in this case, but you will be able to play 3D games. You'll be able to play Skyrim in 3D in another room using a joystick controller. And that's kind of a fun use of it as well, even though that's not a strict virtual reality usage. Now on to the cons. First, this is not easy to set up if you're not technically minded. If you don't have experience setting up a lot of different programs and maybe doing soldering of LEDs, stuff like that, this is not just super easy for somebody who's not technically minded to do. Keep that in mind. Second of all, it uses mouse control um, for your head tracking or joystick control if you'd like to do that instead. But in any case, this isn't a true head tracking like Oculus Rift uses. So when you go in to play Oculus Rift games, you won't get that head body separation like you might with the Oculus Rift. Instead, you just are using your head to control the mouse to look. Next up is that you get about 10 milliseconds of screen lag when you use this method. And that doesn't seem like a big deal. That's pretty on par with a lot of big screen TVs, but it is less than ideal for Twitch shooters like Call of Duty and also is less than ideal for true virtual reality scenarios. This may increase some motion sickness for some people because it doesn't feel quite as natural as it should because you got about a tenth of a second behind. I will show you kind of an example of this lag here in a little bit. It's not very extreme. And lastly, the cap LED setup that we're using only allows you to get about 20 degrees of vertical upwards looking. So that's just because of the physical limitations of the LED model. You will cover up the top LED by looking up much past that. And that means if you do look more than 20 or 30 degrees up, it'll cut off and it might get a little glitch in your game real quick. So that's obviously not ideal and it does take you out of the virtual reality experience from time to time. So here is what it actually looks like. It looks very similar to most other homemade VR products. We have the interior compartment with the lenses, a place for the phone to slide in, which is usually where a display would go. We have three LEDs, top and the two bottom sides, which you can see me flip on here, connected to two AA's and a switch. That's a very simple circuit. If you don't have any soldering experience, that's not hard to do. Um, we use foam board to create the main body of this, elastic to hold the phone in place, and elastic to hold it on your head. These lenses you see are from a pair of binoculars that I got for $3 at a thrift store, but they were good quality binoculars. So those are great lenses that allow um, a great deal of magnification. So the focal length is only two or three inches, I believe. I used rubber foam tape to help pat it against my face and glued it all together with hot glue. This is very easy to construct just from a construction point of view. You're just cutting out foam board, hot gluing it together. You just need to make sure that you have your dimensions all measured correctly so you get the proper focal length and so that it fits comfortably on your head. If you have any questions about the actual construction of the headset, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. But like I said, it's very, very simple. You're essentially just making a box out of foam board. You just have to make sure that it's all to the right dimensions. Gluing some LEDs on there that are wired in a simple circuit wiring each LED in parallel. And that's about it. Now on screen is the software that I use to actually do the head tracking. This is called FreeTrack No IR. It's detecting those three LEDs and then you see the face on the top left, that's where it thinks the face is pointed. So you can see that it tracks quite nicely. Using the LED model works great for this. Usually you would mount these to a baseball cap and not have a headset on, but it works just as fine in this application as well. 
I should note two things about this. This program does default to face tracking. You can use this without a virtual reality headset and just use your face to control games. But obviously your face is covered up when you have this headset on. So I'm using point tracker. That's what you see on the left. And I've changed the control to mouse. So that actually changes where the mouse pointer goes rather than um, using a virtual joystick or something like that. What you see on screen now is a demonstration of the app called Splash Top. You put a Splash Top program on your computer one on your phone, it works on Android and iOS, and it mirrors your display on your phone. What you'll notice is there is anywhere between 5 and 50 milliseconds of lag just depending on your network speed. So this does go across your LAN to connect the two, and you see that it's actually pretty good. Sometimes it's nearly dead on, and other times it's a little bit further off and feels a little bit laggier. That's just to show you this can work very well can work very poorly depending on your home how your home network is set up. Now we have the headset built, we've got those LEDs on there, have the head tracking going with free track no IR. Then we have the desktop being mirrored on the phone, which we're going to use as our monitor just to save costs mostly. Um, you can actually go out and buy a monitor and HDMI hookup, but that will cost you somewhere in the ballpark of $120 to $200. So we're trying to avoid that. Um, the next thing you have to do is get your games to play in stereoscopic 3D. There's two ways you can do this. Some games have mods. Minecraft, for instance, has a mod called Minecraft, <laughs> kind of based on the Oculus Rift word. Um, other games, anything that runs on DirectX, I believe, you can use an app called TriDef 3D. Again, I'll have links to all these apps and everything in the description of this video if you need to reference them. It's called TriDef 3D, and what it does is it allows you to view any movie or any game in stereoscopic 3D. So what you do is you load that up, and then you launch the game through TriDef, and that views it in 3D. So that's how I can play Halo, that's how I can play Seven Days to Die, or any of those kinds of games. Now that we have those main components set up, really all we have to do is say, enable face tracking, start up the game through TriDef 3D. Now we have a full screen game in 3D on our monitor that's being mirrored to our phone which is in the headset we turn on those LEDs and the face tracking software is now controlling our mouse so when we look around in a game it'll look around or sorry when you turn your head it'll actually look around in the game as well that's really all there is to it but there is a lot of little things that it takes to get set up and those might be hard for a lot of people to figure out right off the bat again if you have any questions throw them in the comments I'm happy to help you guys out the virtual reality community is great it helps if we all help each other out so check that out through my research on the internet, this is one of the better cheap homemade uh, virtual reality mm. headsets that I've seen. Usually they go pretty high tech where they're getting accelerometers and they're getting displays and they're getting HDMI ports and stuff like that. Mm. And that can very quickly add up to cost just as much as an Oculus Rift. This unit has cost me so far less than $20 if you're not counting software. I'm just talking about the headset alone costs less than $20 and most of the software has trial versions that you can at least give a go. It certainly has its own limitations as well, but you also get some cool features such as the um, streaming gaming. I can think right now I'm looking for one of those Xbox 360 wireless adapters because I would love to sit with my Xbox 360 controller. I can sit in bed with this headset on my face and my computer can be in the other room and I can just sit with my controller and that headset and just play through some Skyrim or something in full 3D. And that's really cool to me. I would like to be able to do that where you're not having to be tethered to your desk, tethered to your computer, or any of that. And kind of my final verdict on this is how does it work? Um, when I compare it to what I've seen of the Oculus Rift and seen of other, other virtual reality headsets, I'd say it's like 90% there. And especially for the price, maybe it's just worth tinkering around with. That said, it's not immersive enough to really want me to dive into all of my gaming in this virtual reality space. It's got a little bit of a little glitch here, a little glitch there. You forget that you have the limits on the vertical look and you'll look directly up and it'll jerk your character model around, stuff like that. So it's not all the way there, but it is still a lot of fun. I'm having a great time messing with it, just trying to perfect it as much as I can. I will be sure to post additional videos as I update this, as I perfect it further. Um, I do have a video coming, I guess, tomorrow probably, on a game called Terror Rift. It's a Oculus Rift game that's a really scary horror game, and it is super freaky when you're in the virtual reality headset. Any game that's scary on a monitor is probably five or ten times scarier in a virtual reality headset just because you're completely encompassed in it and it's 3D. So look for that. There's some great jump scares in it as well. And like, favorite, and subscribe if you did enjoy it, and I will talk to you tomorrow.